The uh, centaur of that upper stage did mm -hmm. impact, and that would create a plume that would evolve uh, approximately in a peak in visibility about six kilometers in height. So ground observatories would be able to see it at about those levels once it reaches above about 1.5 kilometers in height. And then the Alcross spacecraft had their cameras streaming as they went through collecting data. And then we also had LRO, our sister mission, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, flying over about 90 seconds after impact. So, uh, yeah, that happened about uh, 90 minutes ago. And did it go as uh, you had expected or had hoped? So, uh, when we started last night, with starting with the Centaur separation, mm -hmm. that went fabulous, and that was a critical part of the mission, and that went well. So we headed into impact, and when, when, when the Centaur did impact, everyone was hoping to see this large visible plume, <laughs> and we weren't seeing it in our visible camera, and everybody's like, oh, well, oh what's, no. what's happening here? So, uh, but that, that doesn't mean that it's, uh, we don't have good data there. So what we think we have is a backlog of data where the scientists have to like stream through frame by frame to see what was in there. What we do know is that the uh, uh, Centaur did impact. We do know that the Shepparding spacecraft impact and the observatories on the ground do confirm that they did see a plume uh, rise there. What is the importance of finding that water on the moon? Well, it's, it's, it sets the plans in motion for uh, humans' uh, sustainability on the moon. So uh, it's, if we do find water, we have hydrogen, which could actually be used as a fuel source, mm -hmm. oxygen for human uh, breathing, and water for there. So and it also sets the stage or plans for future lunar missions as well. You know, I'd also like to point out about this uh, webcast. This webcast uh, was the fifth most watched webcast on the <laughs> World Wide Web ever. That was just amazing, with nearly 400,000 viewers. You know, you know, I was teasing about the late night comedians making jokes about it, but it, it's interesting and it did pique people's uh, curiosity about what, what are they talking about? Made people want to watch, really. And I know that, you know, there was a lot of work going into exactly where you would send the rocket. How did you decide to send it on that South Pole? That's the coldest side, of course, but how did you find the location of where you wanted to hit the moon? Okay, well first you wanted to go uh, where the previous missions had uh, detected elevated signs of hydrogen and it was usually in the lunar polar regions and typically in permanently shadowed regions where the sun really never shines and those are cold traps which can hold that water. So uh, the South Pole was uh, chosen just because of our launch date and it, it's all orbital mechanics at that point so we had to go to, to the South Pole. And all the data from uh, LRO and other instruments were indicating the Cabeus region. So the criteria we used, first, it had to be illuminated by the sun. Uh, if we can't see it, there was no use going there. Mm -hmm. The second was the water concentration levels that those other missions saw in there, or the hydrogen concentration levels. And then the third was the observability from the ground. How observable was it? And then the fourth was the, how, how rough was the surface of the crater? So through that criteria, we selected Cabeus Crater. And you were able to do this project relatively inexpensively. Uh, actually, very inexpensively, comparatively to other missions. We were $79 million and uh, developed, had a spacecraft for acceptance in a short 28 months by Northrop Grumman. They That's did a fantastic job there. But $79 million is comparatively cheap to uh, other missions, as you know. Hey, John, when do you think you'll start getting some of that information in? Well, there'll be a press conference for uh, the science team. will hold a press conference mm -hmm. here at 7, and they'll, they'll tell you more. Uh, but as to whether they actually uh, release whether they found water or not, I'll yeah. leave that up to my science team. <laughs>